Hello folks and welcome to May 15th, 2017. It's a Monday uh, and I just wanted to do an update video, uh, show off a few records that I found over the weekend. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit today about collecting um, a, from one particular record label or to, to finding um, you know, the filling basically holes in, in, in your collection. Uh, it's, it's a fun thing. It's, it's, uh, as some of you know, I've, I've sort of started collecting, well, I've been doing it for a while, but the, the Electra 4000 series, which is sort of their pop series, um, there's some interesting stuff that is throughout that, uh, run of a, of a couple of years. So, um, I, I started picking up, you know, like none such, um, not such also, you know, it's sort of an Electra thing, but uh, it, you see these records all the time, so it kind of makes them, it gives gives you something back to, uh, you know, record collecting, especially if you can get them for a dollar and things like that. So uh, I did want to talk a little bit about that today. Uh, I will show you one of the records I got, which uh, turned out to be pretty awesome. Um, and, and I know a lot of times that, you know, when you, when you thrift shop, things can be very hit or miss. And... Um, my goal is to, you know, explore horizons in music that I that I haven't uh, explored before, and, and you know, definitely that you know that that the late '60s, early '70s. There's definitely a very fertile uh, time frame in music. Really, no matter what it is. I mean, from country music to uh, pop to you know whatever, uh, you know, funk, soul, everything. Uh, so I'm I'm sort of you know making sure I, all all bases are covered. So. Uh, I came across this, and I know that, you know, I've been showing a lot of videos that are sort of, uh, you know, this type of music, um, but it's it's interesting sort of to explore it and to kind of, uh, it, to, in my opinion, it really is something that isn't as, you know, documented, so it's sort of, you know, you sometimes you pop this stuff in on the internet and you don't find anything about it at all, you know, these, these artists sort of just disappeared into obscurity. So, um, this record is the everlasting live jesus music concert and it is on the uh maranatha music label which sort of is uh, became a, a you know a, a giant contemporary christian label i guess you'd say but this is sort of the start of it and um i was actually pleasantly surprised by this album so i i uh, sam kind of sat down and listened to it with me and uh you know, there's there's a lot of sort of musical connections here and there, um, but the uh, I'm trying to think of where to start with this. So uh, a lot of the stuff on here, and I kid you not, sounds a lot like uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Uh, there's also some stuff that sounds like Brewer and Shipley. You know, one took over the line, um, but it's really good. Like it's very, um, it's not what you would expect from an album like this. It's not very preachy, I guess you could say. Um, and it, you know, it is contemporary, um, but at the same time, you know, I, I mean, seriously, like I was sold on that picture alone. Like that, that guy, you know, that's, that's pretty awesome. And these dudes over here, these bearded gentlemen, um, <laughs> uh, so there's, there's a, and I don't know if any of these are the actual band. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure at all, but uh, one thing there's there's uh, the band Love Song on here, which sort of went on to release, I think in 1971. This this came out. I'm not sure when in 71, but has a copyright of 1971 down on there. Um, it, he, they went on to sort of release, you know, what is one of the top, uh, you know, contemporary Christian or Jesus people music albums of all time. That's Love Song, and uh, they actually have sort of a psychedelic, so you know, steady on. Uh, they have a, you know, a psychedelic sort of, uh, you know, pathway there. So uh, let me think. So the one of the guys that was in, um, and again, I'm, as far as names, um, I'm not saying that they're insignificant, but they're not. In this particular form, I'm not going to go into, you know, great detail with it. But uh, so the Blues Image, Ride, Captain Ride, um, Blues Image, Blues Image Open, and Red, White, and Blues Image, uh, I think the three albums that they released. Um the one guy that was a guitar player pretty much left and uh, he joined Iron Butterfly, uh, I think for an album, I think Open um, was the album that he was on. Uh, if that was The Ball, I can't remember. <laughs> um, and then the there was a guy that basically came in and filled in 
uh, on the last um, Blues Image album, and they sort of deteriorated. And uh, so he joined and created a love song, basically he was one of the principal songwriters for them. Um, so, it, you know, again, there was sort of a psychedelic thing and, you know, sometimes you wonder, hey, whatever happened to Blues Image? Well, there you go. Um, so uh, you have that, you have a few songs by them. And, it, and like I said, you really get this like like crazy, like Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Uh, there's like some guitar playing that sort of sounds like the, the Stephen Stills um, I forget what the, uh, is it Cherokee? I think is the, is the one that's on the Steve Stills album. Uh, but it sort of has that like really like muted sort of lead guitar line in it. And, um, there's also two like this, there's a, there's a couple songs on there that, uh, by some of the other groups that there's, uh, like it's really the David Crosby sort of his harmonies, like how he sings harmony. Um, and, and I was, I was joking with Sam cause I said, you know, somebody who would have no idea, uh, you know, really the Crosby stills and Nash and, and, you know, their, their entire discography or sort of, you know, their, their catalog, if they weren't familiar with it, you could easily sneak one of these songs off of there and, you know, put it on a mixtape and nobody would know the difference. Uh, so yeah, this was, this was definitely a cool pickup. So, um, not necessarily like a grail by any means, but, um, it does go for, I think there's a one for five bucks on Discogs now. There's another one that's like 16. And then uh, there's a few on eBay that are around the $20 range. I think one recently sold that was sealed for about $28. So if you see this, it's actually fairly decent. Um, so the, the everlasting Gobstopper music concert. So uh, yeah, so some cool stuff there. So uh, to talk to you real quick about, let's see, we're at seven minutes. So can I talk about this in three minutes? Probably not. But um, so uh, another label that I wanted to talk about was a and which uh, a and of course, was uh, Jerry Moss and Herb Alpert sort of created. Um, th these are, this is a band that you're going to, you're going to see these all the time along with Herb Alpert Records. I picked this one up. This is Heads Up by the Baja Marimba Band. Uh, if you're not really familiar with them, they sort of put like sort of a, uh, a Mexican flair, Tex-Mex flair onto popular songs of the day. This one has Winchester Cathedral on it, uh, Born Free and Georgie Girl, probably the biggest ones on there. But um, I think one thing that's sort of worth mentioning about this is that if you think about the entire A&M catalog where you go from... Um, you know, there, there were some huge albums that came out on A&M. Um, and if it wasn't for this band or, uh, even Herb Alpert. So, you know, every time you see Herb Alpert albums in the, in the thrift store, um, if you look at the catalog from the first 20 releases, which is about four years, this is from about 1962 to 1964, um, about 50%, actually, I think it is exactly 50%, 10 of the albums, uh, were either released by Herb Alpert or the Bahama Rimba band. Uh, and if you look at the first maybe 10, which is like the first two years, um, it's somewhere about 60%. So like six of the first 10 albums or, or either 10 albums or either um, that band or Herb Alpert. So they're fun albums. Uh, they're very, uh, if, if you're a collector of 60s music and you want to sort of uh, have a collection that is 60s music, believe me, these were very popular in the 60s. Um, and they sort of just, you know, they're the instrumental sort of uh, elevator music. And, and I know I'd showed some in, in, in previous ones. But again, uh, I'm slowly getting these. But in, if, and again, the, these are so, these are important albums because they carried the label into the point for when you started getting the first Fine Burrito Brothers album uh, in Joe Cocker, Mad Dogs and Englishmen and Lee Michaels. And, um, you know, let's, you know, let's not state the obvious here, but, you know, f there would be no Frampton Comes Alive if there was not a Herb Alpert in the Tijuana Brass. And, um, yeah, you can quote me on that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, these next three, uh, one of them is I just, you know, I, I just brought it to, to make a point for this video. But uh, these two I found, and uh, I can thank Chris at Dixieland Farms uh, for sort of, um, I guess D Dixieland Farm, it's not plural, there's only one. Um, and Chris, Chris is a, is a great guy, and I'm sure that, you know, if you watch my channel, you probably have seen his stuff. But uh, Chris has definitely kind of turned me on to um, 
he's he's a huge um, exotica. Uh, he, the albums that he buys, I mean, he definitely does everything on a budget, so he's not just dropping forty dollars on you know the you know mobile fidelity you know dark side of the moon or whatever which is probably four hundred dollars i don't know just an example so he he's always shown interesting stuff so if you watch his videos there's always sort of little chestnuts that are important to pay attention to um but chris collects this label i guess to a point chris you know whatever I'm, i won't speak for you but um this is the project three label which uh probably most noted for um the free design kites are fun and you know i think they released about four albums between that one and 1970 but uh i i, I want to say that if it wasn't for the the free design they probably floated enoch light uh because i mean man the the way that he talks about the way that the project three is uh uh how they achieved the total sound they basically just were you know flushing money down the toilet to make it sound that good by the sounds of it um, but these are all sort of instrumental um you know you'll have uh not necessarily on this one but you'll have sort of a lot of you know the the hits and uh, as soon as i found these i asked chris if he wanted them and he was like yeah but don't pay more than a dollar for them so this is from 1966. Uh, this is pr 5000 sd so i think it's the first one in the in sort of the you know the way that these were and, and this is the fun thing about collecting a label, sort of, you know, that a lot of times you get a new label that, you know, the design was all the same. So you get sort of this familiar sort of thing. Um, this one was actually really cool. And um, I probably would would have kept it if I wouldn't, if I didn't tell Chris I was going to already send it to him. So this is, uh, it's happening. So let's dance. Enoch Lights, action, action, action. And just to give you an idea on what's on here. So working in the coal mine. Um, uh, Yellow submarine. You can't hurry love. Uh, over under sideways down you get yourself a yardbirds cover on there uh respectable and turn down day and of course sunshine superman so turn down day of course the circle uh performed that one but uh, uh you know project three i think they also had the critters the critters were on cap they did one album on cap and then they they signed i think maybe two albums a two album deal with uh, project three um, so these are these are fun and these are cheap and uh, these are these ones these particular ones are just in pristine condition because they're in that plastic sleeve inside the paper sleeve thing. So you know, I'm sure somebody probably only listened to these once anyhow. But, uh, look at that. That's that's like a brand new record. Probably only played once. Uh, so there's you know there's another Enoch Light. And then this one which I've which I've this has been in my collection twice which I got it a long time ago. And then I was just like, oh, this is garbage, and I got rid of it. And then I sort of read about Project 3 and was like, oh, so I'm going to get this. So uh, this is Tony Matola, and uh, this guy's in love with you, so there's your Herb Alfred connection. Uh, do you know the way to San Jose? Dream a little dream of me with a little help, Scarborough Fair. Uh, by the time I get to Phoenix, kites are fun. Why not, right? Uh, Cry me a river going out of my head. So again, some really cool stuff. And this actually has some fuzz guitar on them. So you can find these pretty cheap and it's just sort of like mood music. Like, uh, you know, you just sort of can put it on and just kind of chill out to it. So, but uh, yeah, so thanks Chris for sort of, you know, kind of turning me onto that label. And, and I think Chris is, you know, like I said, he's, he's Exotica, you know, he's, he's probably one of the, the only people that show that on YouTube. Um, I think Chris is probably the only person who's ever showed a Martin Denny record, um, and I may be lying about that, but you know, whatever. Don't don't. Uh, I'm sure Chris can speak for that. So again, thanks for watching. Sorry, it was a little bit longer than normal, but uh, have yourself a great week, and uh, we'll see you on down the trail.